war, bloodshed, explosions, and losses. These words describe what most military folk have to go through. So let's dive into some intricate details as never seen before. Details about when and why they enrolled into armed forces, was it by choice or some other reason? What period in history did they serve and what wars they fought? We will also have an opportunity to learn of some of the toughest or intense moments during active duty. Finally, we will learn how they are influencing our current society and contributions to our community. How they are changing and positively influencing today's generation. So, let's begin. I was, uh, I went in January 11th, 1966 and got out January 12th, 1968. Well, my active duty started in April uh, 1967 and went to April uh, 1970. I joined in 1981 and I did active duty till 1991 and stayed in the reserves for two years in the, Cal in the Bay Area. So I did 12 years of service. I was active duty from 1965 September until June or July of 70. I was active duty for five years. So I joined the Navy in 1992. Uh, I did six years active duty, uh, most of which were in uh, Pearl Harbor. As a, as a nuclear welder and ship fitter, mm -hmm. specializing in submarines. I uh, got out and joined the, immediately joined the reserves. Uh, I got out of the reserves uh, in uh, 1990, uh, or 2001, mm -hmm. uh, actually right before 9-11. Took five years off, got my degree, and then joined back in, joined back up in the reserves. So I'm currently uh, Navy Chief. Uh, station in Ada Alameda. Oh, wow. I actually run the uh, Surge Wing NAVC uh, Pacific Fleet uh, currently. So it's kind of a neat project. 1955 to 58, the United States Navy. I was uh, in active duty from January of 1966 to January of 1968. I was in the reserves for a little while in 56. I went on active duty on October 9th, 1956. And I got off active duty on July 8th of 1961. I was going to college. I came up, I grew up in the Detroit area. Um, college bound, went to college for a year and a half. Decided that was not my calling. Um, going to some of the local community colleges and stuff. Um, I was working as a shore rubber cook. And one of my friends had talked about a military program, which was my real first experience to the military. I don't come from a... Um, my father was not in the military, I had a couple uncles and that, but did not a strong military influence. So talking to him, I did a little research on my own, checked the different branches, and uh, found out that Navy Nuclear Power was one of the best programs that the forces were offering. So I put in and went in for a six-year enlistment with the U.S. Navy, starting off with uh, boot camp in Great Lakes. A school in Great Lakes, and then on to Nuclear Power School down in Florida, and then out to the fleet. I saw, actually signed up right out of high school. I, I, uh, joined, I graduated from high school on Friday, and went to boot camp in San Diego on Monday. Uh, come from a small town in uh, California called Chester, Lake Almanor, and uh, there wasn't a whole lot going on up there, so I uh, had a lot of family that was in the, in the military, so I signed up to defend the country. My older brother was in the Navy four years prior to me, and I was brought up in New Jersey on the East Coast, next to the Navy anyway. So that's why I went to the Navy. I like the Navy better. Well, I graduated from college. I had a degree in uh, math, biology, and chemistry, and uh, my family were physicians. I was going to be a doctor or a dentist, but I had a college roommate that a couple years prior to that dropped out of college and went to the Marine Corps as a Marquette and became a Marine pilot. I thought, well, oh, maybe I'd like to be a pilot. So I looked into it and uh, uh, joined and went through the pilot training program. Well, it was a situation where right out of high school, I immediately joined the Army Reserves. The thought process that I had was that I knew from the time I got into college 
that I would be in the military at some time or another. In fact, as a sophomore in high school, I made a pact with my best friend in high school that uh, what we would do is uh, we would graduate from high school, we would go to college, we would graduate from college, and after college we would go into the service and we would do our, our, our time in service and service to our country, and then after service we would uh, come back to Illinois we would be in Springfield, Illinois, and we would get a job there, and we would set up a bachelor apartment, and that was our thought process. That's, the, that's what we decided we would do when we were sophomores in high school. Actually, I'd gone up to Plattsburgh with the intent on joining the Marines, mm -hmm. but their office was closed, and the next door I tried was the Navy, and they were closed, and the Air Force was open, and that's all I needed. Followed orders, did what you were told to do, and, uh, you know, most of the time I was in training. You do a lot of training and uh, learning, how, you know, what to do in situations, things like that. Uh, uh, and then also I was an instructor pilot, so I was on the other side of it. You know, I was handing out training and you know, showing the uh, students uh, what, to, what they're supposed to do in certain situations or how to operate the aircraft, that sort of thing. Well, I was out there doing what I was supposed to do for my country, what I signed up to do. Being that I was brought up on the East Coast, across from New York and what have you, I saw a lot of stuff from World War II uh, happen on the East Coast. In fact, 1944, I saw a German U-boat sank off of New Jersey, across from New York. Well, I would say my period of service um, closed out the Cold War. Uh, we were in the Persian Gulf. We did a lot of, uh, we did a few... Uh, Bering Sea cruises, we went north. Mm -hmm. During one of those cruises, we actually escalated the Russian Navy to a point of, well, the highest point of escalation they've been since the Cold War period. And as I mentioned, you're out there, you're doing your job. You get called to general quarters. Um, you react, and you don't always know why, what, what's happening. You, you're just trying to do your job, so you go and do it. And then later on, we were told the event is we got a little close to their shores, they got a little excited, and uh, just did the job we were trained to do. So uh, at the end of the cruise, we were given a meritorious unit commendation. And then the explanation, uh, you kind of think that, you know what, uh, not seeing any real, um, real combat, you know, you see, uh, ships from other countries, you get flyovers from the Russian bears, their uh, information aircraft, and so you saw a lot of things going on around you. But um, that was really, uh, kind of took home the presence of um, knowing what we're trained to do and why we're out there, to keep the world a safer place. And I, I guess when, when you ask the question, the, the thing that during this conversation, the thing that really kind of hit home is the first time that we went to uh, Pearl Harbor in Hawaii. Our captain wasn't senior enough to bring us into the Pearl Harbor piers, so we had to go to Ford Island and uh, dock there. Well, being an engineer, we're in the fantail of the ship, so I came up, looked over the fantail, looked into the water, and saw the fantail of the USS Utah staring up at me. And I guess that really kind of settle things for me and let me know why I'm out there, but for the people that were there before us and gave us the um, standard of living we live in now. But that was really, when you think of Pearl Harbor and the things that happened, I think that was probably a really settling moment for me to look at my ship and you know what we do and just the pride I have in my vessel and then to look down and see a sunken fantail of... One. Well, the one that, that was the most impressive and the scariest was uh, 1958, uh, Eisenhower sent the entire Seventh Fleet through the Formosa Straits, all in a very big line, and we went steamed through it. And because uh, the Reds were selling, the Communists were selling the Matsu and Komoi Islands uh, off of Formosa, and in China, and he sent the entire fleet through the Straits to show the Chinese that uh, they should not mess with us. And uh, that was pretty scary, and especially when you saw shells going over your head. Well, uh, myself personally, um, I'm very specialized. 
there's actually only, I'm still, still an active reservist, there's actually only eight of us in the reserves that are nucleonics certified. Um, so being that I have that ability or those, mm -hmm. that skill set, uh, being able to go out and work on the ships and submarines, the aircraft carriers, uh, all the nu nuclear uh, platforms, being able to keep them fit to fight is, is, that's what I do, that's my job. So being able to do that keeps, keeps everything floating in the, in the cogs all meshing and working together in order to protect this great country. I just feel that uh, now, in hindsight, that you know, doing more than doing things for more than myself is important, and we can help our communities. We should help our communities in any way we have with whatever gifts we've been given by God. And uh, I'd say the influence today is just what I do in service projects that I do for others. Um, and my, my, in my interaction with my family and helping out. We as veterans influence the youth of America by just uh, letting them know that uh, what we did we, we were pretty proud of, or very, we're very proud of what we did, and that during the different times that we served, we feel like that we did what we, what we did for, uh, for the country, and we hope that we are passing that on to the youth of America. And I think that's very difficult today because everybody is so busy with what they're doing and, uh, and even the veterans are busy with what they're doing and there's probably not enough discussion between youth and, and elders to, uh, to get that done.